So, I mean, Bristleback's really great for that. Okay. Well, we'll see if Fnatic's got what it takes. It's kind of down to the wire there. One game down up against Alliance. So, uh, it will be all down to this one. Will Fnatic be able to push it to a third? Or will they be headed down into that third place matchup, which will be our first game tomorrow here on our live stream? Hopefully everyone is tuning in all around the world, enjoying the coverage. We're coming to you live from X Games, which is in a wonderful Texas. It's, it, you could say it's heating up here, you could say. Dear Lord, it is. Oh, yeah. I actually didn't know it was that humid down here. I thought it was going to be a little more on the dry side, but... Uh, and if you want humidity, talk to Team Fanatic. They'll tell you what humidity is about. <laughs> I used to live in uh, Louisiana, so I, I know a little bit about it. Uh, I, I've never been to Louisiana, but I've been to Singapore and Malaysia oh, I've, I've many, heard. many times, and holy Hannah, like, you can have a shower while walking in air. That's how great it is. All right, so Fnatic, well, if you're worried about Alliance contesting him up against a tri lane, Ooh. Mad's going to scatter it all out, but will he get any slow? Okay, KOX went Aura. He doesn't have cold arrows, which means Mushy cannot get in range. And this will mean that Mad will be able to survive. What a great choice to go boots first. Yeah. Seconds. Uh, yeah, you, you, don't, you do not want to skill up frost arrows either. Like, yeah. most of the time these drows these days are, are not getting that. Uh, which, which to me, like, okay, I had a debate with... Who was I debating it with? It was either Blitz or it was with Cap. Um, it might have actually been with someone else. Uh, <laughs> while we were <laughs> casting the other day. And it was a debate about if Drone Ranger's Cold Arrows really makes sense to bypass. Like, what do you really get for two points up in stats that you wouldn't get out, the like, that you wouldn't get out of two points up in cold arrows? Because you can't kite. Yeah. Oh, it was Nahas. I was having the debate with Nahas. Uh, it was like, okay, so you can't kite. In fact, you get kited because of this. Does it really make sense to get the two points up in the stats? Um, the, I mean, we could go into a huge debate about this and talk for a long time, but I, I think the long... The, long, the, the short answer, rather, is that the stats are more important because it gives you more more agility. You're probably not going to be fighting in fights much anyway, and if, usually if you go for Saint Yasha, the chances of you proccing are probably pretty high anyway. Mm -hmm. um, and also to supplement that, a lot of people will, will actually go Scotty eventually on Drow, and if that's the case, then you absolutely don't need the Frost Arrows. But I mean, that, that's a that's a long discussion that could be had. But they're actually going to go aggro Trilight here. Yeah, it's, for Fnatic. It, it's kind of weird to see Fnatic do something like this because they don't have any... Yeah, we, you were saying it before, Drone Ranger doesn't have any levels of control in the lane until she gets up in like higher levels. That's if you're going Cold Arrow, Frost Arrows, as well as looking in towards the Gust. And the Visage needs time because he's just got Grave Shield for now. As you were also saying, his movement speed is kind of crap, so you need to have something to offset that. And the Grave Shield is one way to do it. And then you've got Johnny. Uh, he, he's a one-man stun wonder up against a DK... A Rubik control and the Illuminate spam when you also didn't block up the pull point. So Arcade's managed to stack this and now pulls through. So the creep wave will be denied. You're going to lose the momentum and KOX Way won't be able to find the farm. I, I'm really not yeah. sure about this try lane. It doesn't help that he's missed like three CS already, which can be a little bit difficult with Drow's attack animation early on. Loda taking a little bit of damage. Nice full duration stun there. Actually taking a ton of damage. Yeah. One more Johnny, attack. He the actually salve. The salve and the level up helped him there. Just keeps him alive for the moment. He did actually skill up Anthony when he leveled up, so he didn't go for the Dragon Blood, but Loda will still walk all the way back to base. And you do see the Drow Aura kicking in a little bit more. That was just a bonus extra, like, 18 damage on the bottom lane, but it was enough to bring DK very, very close to death. Really nice stun there. The full, um, I don't even know if I said duration, but the full length of that stun, actually. Getting Mad. the full effect in this out of it. Well, Matt's just going to pick him up and throw him back towards Johnny. He's fine here. But it's uh, it's just uh, Kichik who's blocking up the camps now. With three players out here, you'd expect, you'd expect them to control the runes, but Mads may able to just slip himself through and pick up that bounty. As Mushi will grab himself an illusion rune. How's that mid lane looking? Pycat as the Queen of Pain, 10 for 3 up against 11 for 2. It's not too shabby for both sides. It's a relatively even matchup. Bo both players can win, but once you get to level 5 uncontested on Shadowfiend, he can just spam out waves, so... There is potential there, of course, though, for Quap to get the kill. Well, the answer about if you go for Cold Arrows of KOXY with an aggro trial lane, the answer is yes. Uh, there's also another thing, too, which uh, I know Blitz was, was flagging to me with the Keeper of the Light. When you try and... When you up against a lane like this, like, sometimes you get the advantage by pushing the lane underneath the tower. Right. And Drone Ranger, it's already hard enough for it is for her to get a last hit underneath the tower with her attack animation as well. So the damage isn't bad, but it keeps the push coming. The harassment to the heroes and just makes farming almost impossible. And levels doesn't really matter because you're splitting it two or potentially three ways.
Yeah, they don't care about creep equilibrium here for Alliance. They've actually just spamming out both of their spells. And uh, Rubik isn't even there. He's actually walking all the way up top. So if they can get enough damage and some good stacks onto Ohio up here, um, th they can definitely get this kill. We'll see, though. I don't know if he, he's been gone for a long time and he hasn't been sh he hasn't shown. Because their only ward is all the way bottom and then, of course, in the lane. But that actually hasn't seen Mad just yet. Uh, Bulldog's so. starting it. So man's only got a 1-1 one, one combo, but with the creep wave under the tower, he can just walk in close, there's a one cool spray stack, make that two, Ohio can't get the fear drop, Fatebot throwing him back, the fissure will come out, but it doesn't do anything, Bulldog even back up to it, oh didn't God. attack him, and then turns the back, there's your first blood, Bulldog with the back turn means he also won't die to the tower attacks. And that's uh, a good start for the offlaner. You know, with him taking the aggro from that tower, I, I wonder if even he could have got that kill, if that stun actually hit Bulldog. It would have been closer, for sure. He would have got an extra 125 damage plus the aftershock. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I don't know if you saw that one. I missed it. I there missed. was a facade where you look at a coddle to not go tranquils and maybe go to arcanes just because of... You want to be breathe firing out all the time as the DK? P possibly. I think there's a very good case for it. Especially on heroes that really, really need the mana. Like, DK needs it heavily. Because no. uh, he, he's not bottling, he's just going to destroy a Basilius. Your Bristleback is always going to need that mana from start to finish in the entire game. And the thing about Bristle, and, and DK actually for that matter, is these are not these are heroes that don't build into mana items. Like, that, hardly ever. Maybe the Shiva's late game, but that's the closest thing you're going to get for Bristleback. And then perhaps the drums, but that's not that much int. So look at that damage he's putting onto Ohio again. Yeah, they're going at it. The fidgets. This time going to connect an Admiral Bulldog, but three cool spray, cool spray stacks. He needs just one more attack, and Johnny's going to arrive for the hex. Ohio, he knows he can't do anything about this. He does have eight stick charges up his sleeve, but there's no point turning and trying to fight this. But you can throw out one fish, but it's not going to kill Admiral Bulldog. He's, he's getting closer and closer towards completing up this Vanguard as he mops up the Creep Wave is even better. She did trigger... No, well, uh, Ohio. Careful. <laughs> and now he'll trigger the Sick Charges. Yep, he is up to 19 CS, which is not bad, but obviously you, you're seeing this. The, the Bristleback versus this lane is just... Mm -hmm. it's You can't really win it. Melee versus Bristleback is very, very difficult, unless you're maybe like a Tide. But even then, it's still quite hard. Again, RK was capable of stacking and pulling. He's not only just getting experience from this, because Keeper of the Light is such a great jungler, uh, once he gets a couple levels, of course, but you're able to do this. Like, Lotus managed to drag the creep wave back between the towers, so he's able to hold up his own creep wave. Fnatic is so far away, the Drone Ranger actually had to abandon. She's gone top lane up against Bulldog. This is what had to have happened. There's no other choice for them. And Matt, around the corner, uh -oh. he'll find Mushy. I don't know if he really wanted to. He can drag it back. Now Pycat jumps in. Sonic Wave's available. But the race number one and two going to connect. Pycat, a very injured man with Luzier in the future. He can't blink. The Thor Assumption damage will get the pick off. A good, a good hero kill in for Fnatic. Mad, still in the neighborhood. He's got no abilities available, but he's got also Admiral Bulldog right behind him. Now the stun. Admiral Bulldog in his back turns. How much damage have they got? The Soul Assumption is there. And if Mad's got Telekinesis, yeah, he does. They pick up the Passage and they'll shut him down. So it's a bit of a trade off, but you still killed off the Queen of Pain. You slow down Pycat's momentum. Yeah, that was an interesting blink there from Pycat, because he blinked in aggressively, but then the second he blinked in, he just like ran away. So I, I think he was like anticipating just putting out more Dyer's damage with the screen, but it is only level two. And he just saw the quick reaction there from Mushi to just turn it right when he blinked in. So a bit of a mistake there, but nice rotation also from, from Bristleback coming down once he saw Ohio was missing too. That cleaned up the rest of it. Lotus still having all the space in the world down the bottom lane, which to me feels a little bit a little bit weird for Fnatic. Because you got the Earthshaker who comes to the bottom lane up against the DK. Now, DK's even got kill potential up against him when he's got mana. Uh, but it's the fact that Dragon Knight's now going to hit level 6. So your Dragon form, they're purposefully giving him space to find these levels so DK can start pressuring into, into buildings yeah. by himself. There's a way that KYXY up here can actually get a kill on Admiral Bulldog uh, if he's uh, a little bit limber oh, about it. Loader. Oh, no. Grave chill. Johnny with the stun. Loader. Now it's up level 6. He buys a TV scroll. The raise misses. And they don't have another stun. They have a hex. But no Grave chill. Will she will come in range? There's your extra stun coming from the Fissure. The help is there from Pycap, but the Top. Illuminate doesn't hit into Fnatic. They had, he needed more time to get around the tree line. And top, Admiral Bulldog gets the kill for free. He might die. There's not a stun up from Ohio, and he just gives up. So a very, very nice dive there from Bulldog. I actually thought that KYXI was going to get a kill if he could play his cards right, but, man, the stacks were just adding up, and he just went for it. So Admiral Bulldog gets a solo kill on the Drone Ranger. He finishes a full Vanguard eight minutes into the game oh God. on a Bristleback. 
and he's already up at level 8. Well, at least for Fnatic's sake, he doesn't have any, like, huge ancient stacks. In fact, he's got none, but, I mean... He's, he's gonna take buildings. Like, that's what he's gonna get. Because the Dragon Knight's got level 6, so... Bring in your physical damage, bring in that wall pass stack up, and just push down bottom lane. You'll take a tier 1 town, nothing will stop him. Like, what can Fnatic really do as far as counter push goes? The SF doesn't want to get involved, he's too busy trying to take up his stacks. He also just used the DD room, which might have helped him. The Drow Ranger, yeah, she's level 6. Maybe you could find yourself a trade-off for the towers. That's one way you could approach it. Yeah, no, that's that's a good point. Like, their, their real only counter push, or D push, I should say, is Earthshaker. But that's That's one that's Fisher. It. Like, yeah, that's one Fisher. It's got a relatively long cooldown, too. 15 seconds. Oh, now it's Alliance. They are grouping up, but not in the lane I thought they were going to go to. And so they come to the lane where KOAXY was looking just to have a little bit of, like, peace and quiet, retirement village kind of style. Then they pick up the Visage, throwing back the Illuminus coming in, too. It'll connect with the Sonic Wave to ensure the kill on the Visage. Pike actually blinking in for that. Potentially getting caught out by Ohio, but now it's KOAXY back behind the tower, the only place where it's safe. And luckily for him, that Radiant Creep Wave didn't push up yet. But Alliance are coming here for the tower. While load up is, is smoke and mirrors. He's pushing at the bottom lane now with the DK ultimate. KOXY, Shadow Strike up, Admiral Bulldog's in the middle of this one. And Dro, well, no aura, no damage, and no life. She this, is dead underneath the tower. This has turned into a disaster early on. Like, their supports have nothing either. It's not like, well, at least we're going to have a really farmed Visage or, you know, some kind of jungler. Visage has actually doesn't have a last hit to his name, just got his first one just now. I guess he's almost level 6, but. Uh, this is kind of spiraling out of control right now. It needs to be Mushi. Oh, they actually he's, get a Fisher block. He's going to blink tag it so he can cash down and go to slam as well. Blinding Light going to force him back. And now Admiral Bulldog's got a chance to run. One shot is triggered. Mushi lines up the ulti. Admiral Bulldog still living through a hell of a lot here with the oh. Illumina. Ohio! Down a 40 life. His charges are on cooldown for the moment. Mushi will give him a bold charge. Top and it takes so much just to kill off Admiral Bulldog. They committed the full Requiem in the first reveal of the blink dagger from SF. I think Mushi just wants to take over the game, and I think that Blink might be the right decision. I don't, like, because if you think, if he goes for a mech, I don't think they can group up with these heroes they can't. At, at, with this raid. Like, and and not, not against the power of Alliance. Like, one Illuminate is basically what the mech would repair. Yeah, exactly. And that's, that's, not, that's enough. not enough. Yeah, it's definitely not enough. So, like, I think this is the right decision. Um, he, he couldn't get into a BKB either. It'll you, take too long. You maybe go for a Yules too, to maybe get some free pickoffs onto the co-op. That's may, maybe a, an option. At this point, I think it's just going to be Blink, go back for the treads, and then build a BKB. I, I think that probably has to be it. The good thing about this build is that he doesn't really have to build too much into damage, because that's going to be supplemented by the Drought Aura. Not so much now, but it will be pretty big later. Um, but yeah, this is probably the right route to go. A high is coming down for a kill over on DK. Dragon Forms on cooldown for one more second. Is, is he going? Yeah, Admiral Bulldog's again. He's back behind the tower. Forces the TP in from Mushi. Jump in into the body block. Oh, following up with the hex. There's no stop for three more seconds, but there it is from the Fissure. That'll control Bulldog. But no! The Claw Spray actually kills off the line before he starts a bubble. And now they're trying to pull him out of here. The attack will come in. He takes damage, so they cannot get him away to safety. But they get a one for one trade off, and they secure the bottom tier one tower. And they can go further. They can, because they use TPs, and they, even without the TPs, I don't think they could have stopped this, necessarily. DK old form is up for a good duration, too. Wow. If they could have maybe planned the the call, the sendback, whatever it's called. <laughs> I can't even... Recall. Recall. It, it is a really long duration, level one. It's five-second delay, so probably didn't get it. Wouldn't have got it anyway, but nice try. And like I said, space created. A ton of space created. Yeah, they took out half of the life of the Tier 2 tower and the Tier 1 tower, and even managed to snipe themselves off a familiar from uh, from Kichik. Because he was using them to try and slow the attack. Middle I wonder if Mushik just goes attack. bots here. Like, he hasn't bought his treads yet. It leads me to believe maybe he just goes... Oh, no, he bought his treads. Okay, yeah. never mind. <laughs> I've passed my curse onto you now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Don't hold on to it for long, man. It's not, it's not happy times. This hot potato curse here. Let's mm, send it somewhere else. How are we looking actually for Pie Cat? He's walking around with 1800 gold. Like, you would assume if he was going to go in for an orchid, he would already he would have started like, like a half of an Oblivion stamp already. So, does that mean we're thinking about Naganim Scepter for the Queen of Pain instead? Or is BKB more viable up against Fnatic in this game? 
I mean, BKB is amazing here. He, the other option is to like to go for the, uh, the rush jewels so that the silence doesn't do anything. But that doesn't stop an instant hex, right, from, from Lion or a long range Fisher, which can catch people off guard because it, you can't see it because it's so long range. So I, I think rushing the BKB is totally fine. Yeah, we're, we're basically got a whole bunch of pack smokers right now. Alliance group up as five while Fnatic, they move as three over towards the Radiant Jungle, but they're basically gone like ships in the night, straight past each other. They're moving over to Mad, who is the poor man, farming up the mid lane. The smoke, well, it's gonna break because Pike has nearby. He doesn't blink in time. Finger of Death will be there with his whole assumption. Full of Fidger and goes the control up Mad, but the instant buyback comes out from Pycat, because Elias won't try and fight this one. Admiral Bulldog chasing down Johnny, but it's Arke pushing Mushi back. The Requiem Souls not enough to get the kill, but the blinding white, making it very difficult to finish the job, but Mushi still with the double kill, and Loader, Battling up against Visage, but Visage has basically spawned his children, and they will do a lot of damage to Loader as they come back up. You can at least get the regeneration room bottled up, and this will buy space for Loader to potentially get back in the fire's pie cat with a Sonic Wave. Helps Admiral Bullock to get a double kill, and Mad so low on life, it's still a triple kill for Mushi, but he's on the wrong side of the tracks, or in this case, River. Blinks down, TP's away, now he's on the right side. Ohio with the Fisher, keeping pie cat back, but he gets in front. Scream, Shadow Strike, needs a goo. Fizz has been gunked up with everything they've possibly got, making a run for the Agents, a potential denial here, we and he's going to be successful. The Urshaker denies himself to the Thunder Lizards. So those the great fight for Fnatic. Yeah, those buybacks end up being not very useful. I mean, Mads was a complete dieback. He diebacked, so they both bought back there. Pycat only got one kill out of that, and it's probably a kill that we're going to get either way. Although the damage from the ultimate is pretty substantial. But, uh, yeah, I mean, really, really big stuff. Mushi is just playing so well. You can tell he really, really wants this. Stay in, man. It's the, it's the first. It's the first time the Fnatic has made a showing publicly with this name. Yeah. And they've also got a lot of. They've got a lot of haters behind them. Obviously, no one in Malaysia, but all of those rave fanboys are always like, "Why did Fnatic get invited? Why do they deserve to get a slot into TI directly?" And they've got a lot of reasons to to win this game and, and to just silence those critics. Yeah, and he is just going to rush the BKB. I think this is the build this game for sure. Like I said, the damage will come from the Drought Aura eventually. I mean, it's not bad right now, it's, but it's also not great. Yep. And then after this, I would think Scotty would be very, very substantial against the, the two tanks, the Dragon Knight and the uh, Bristleback to help kite him around. Just make yourself really, really tanky. It can actually just... The thing about Queen of Pain is that many times you want to blink in very, very aggressively and just spam out your spells and make them run away. But if they're not running away and you're not doing enough damage, it's very, very easy to turn onto it. And he is going to go for the Ags to yep. answer our questions from earlier. Here comes Fnatic. They're looking for an opening. And Alliance. Well, they got a Sentry Ward in the side, but that's not going to help him break the smoke. Now it will. RK, he saw Johnny. They instantly ping it out, and they move to the dire side of the river. Or do they? Yes, no. You just an Admiral Bullock and Loader to get double stunned by Johnny. Ohio with a Fissure separates Admiral Bullock from the rest of his team. He still wants to have a look around, keeping his back turned. 14 one charges and a Crimson Guard with RK holding on to Blinding Light. The Illumin says you're going to hit on most of Fnatic, and I think, yeah, they see this coming, and they already bail out. They don't want to fight it, while Pi Cap, that T1 tower, Mushi missing the denial on the tower. Has and Admiral Bull, does he want to keep pushing with no tower? They do have the uh, command of the territory here. Especially when Fnatic is split up as much as they are, but they've got the movement speed to escape the Alliance train. And Loda's going for a very non-farm build too. Just looks like he's going to rush the BK, BKB as well. Which signifies like a kind of death ball strat with this kind of, with this kind of heroes. And if that fails, then you got to be really, really careful for the late game potential. Like letting Drow Visage get back in this game after a terrible, terrible start. I mean, it looks kind of funny to think that Fnatic would have the late game, but the way that the, the items are coming out for Alliance, that's how it would shape up if they fail a push. That's one thing you have to be careful about and think about before you go for this push. Oh, wait and think. They did a lot of that during game number one, but so do that much, don't do too much of it in game number two. With more yes, kills, a blink. With and more he's kills the minutes. He's baiting this line down here, it looks like. It's, it's just too obvious, though. Like, why would the Lion be out past where a tier 1 tower doesn't exist when he has no blink dagger? Like, you can smell that something's wrong. And Ohio? He's looking at him. He really wants to jump. Blink, Echo Slam, Mad still here. But he's getting the pick up, not in time. They figure of death him down. And Mad, no steal. He only got the totem stomp. That's not enough. And Ohio, the scream, it doesn't hit in time. 
You get away to safety. Very nicely played. And that is one of the drawbacks of Alliance's Drought. Without the DK stun there, there's really in the lift, which is already used. There's no way. Oh, Mushi. He's deep. He's very deep. Blinding Line's going to make it so almost impossible to get the last hit in the town. But get picked off, in fact, by just the catapult. So Mushi's not done yet. He's got mad. High ground. Requiem. Boom! The drop to from Alliance gets obliterated. Top tower has fallen. Wow. The mushy wind up. <laughs> and they got the top tower with the birds as well. So the, things are going very, very well for, for Fnatic now. And Drow, like, yeah, herself, she's not a great late game carry, but she's going to provide so much damage for her heroes. Podcat's in Viz right now. He has a level 2 ult. Yeah. This could be big. Okay, KOX wants you to have known this, though. Because Pycat came in so close attack. that he lost the aura for it. And now the Fisher will fly. Pycat was only waiting for that one. Sonic Wave line isn't quite right, but now he's in range. Sonic Wave and Scream can't find the kill straight away. In fact, he's going to get Sans with a gust. Arrow Bulldog will turn on that Crimson Guard so he can chase him deeper. Cool spray time up. Needs to go on KOX White. In by you know, only the choice to body block. He couldn't do anything else. Now the run back out again. Fissure, Illuminus, it's only hurting out Mushy and Johnny. And Admiral Bullock will survive. 180 life. Yes, sorry. I'm che uh, checking ping as well to make sure everything's squared away. But yeah, we should uh, be fine. Yeah. You're, you're too much of a player. <laughs> <laughs> Because at this point as a caster, you realize you don't control anything. Yeah, yep. Yeah. It's like, what, what have we got? Well, I don't know. Valve released a patch. They released, actually released a patch halfway through one of our games the other night. Don't you ever sometimes want to step in when there's a dispute and, like, you know, put your foot down, but you can't? Oh, God. I, and originally, yes. But now you just sit back and watch it all, huh? And, and, then, and then I realized that I just... Like, you become the bad guy for everyone. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, That's true. So we just make tournament admins to be bad guys. They, they all get, they get the hatred. I just hear, like, oh, boys, I don't control for. anything, but I'll try and help you out as best as I can. It's the job they signed up for. Right? Yeah, so. it is. It's, it's the thankless job. The no love job. Yeah. Oh, okay. Good luck pushing again, Mushi. Again, we go into this position where, okay, Mushi's controlling the battle nicely. He's looking very, very good for, for net worth. He's over 10,000. So we have a very good BKB SF. But you got a BKB pretty early on. He's on a 10 second duration, 20, 20, 20 minutes in. That's fine. Uh, but you think about it, how can Fnatic get up on a high ground? Does it turn into this familiar... It's like split push thing with the draw or a buff up. When you're going up against Breathe Fire, Sonic Wave with Aghanim's upgrade, Illuminate, Fade Bolt, all these wonderful Radiant's like creep wave tower. controlling Radiant's abilities top. and creep wave clearing abilities they've got. Like, how does Fnatic top. end this? If it really comes down to it, yes, they can do split split pushing with the birds. But I think it's going to come down to more of like getting a pick off with like they have great pick off between Lion, who almost has a blink now, and the Earthshaker. That will always. Oh, Drow Ranger gets a kill. And another kill, actually, second one, as they weren't able to get away fast enough after lingering around that tower. I'm really surprised they stuck around that long yeah. because Pycat and Loader abandoned that lane. They were going in top lane. They saw Johnny for a little bit and knew the TPs were coming in and just bailed. I. Mm, maybe a little bit of miscommunication slipping in here for Alliance. That's, that's going to be Roshan, too. So catch a Kimbun who now has that uh, medallion. He's had it for a little bit, for some time. That, oh god, Roshan dies so fast with these heroes. Yep. And Drone Ranger loves it. Absolutely loves it. And they're on Dire, which is just like an added bonus. Oh, it's top lane. They're battling it out. Ohio looks like he actually blinked himself in for the stun. The Pike Cat and Loader are okay. They're down to half life. But they're able to get away to safety. That's a big pickup now for Fnatic. Lion now has his Blink Dagger. So that's that Blink X, which could just make any kind of BKB, like one DK is a better finish, it could just make it a nerd. Yeah, it's... So that's what I'm saying, like, the late game, their potential to pick someone off was is always going to be irrelevant. <laughs> Man was just starting the channel to grab Mushy. He was walking down right in front of the Radiant Observer Log with no vision of this high ground area. And thought he was completely alright. And Mushy has a haster now bottled to... He could... Eh, uh, I don't know, this, this Bulldog is pretty, pretty damn tanky. But he's got a Sange now on top of that, waiting in the stash. But I really think Scotty would be quite good for Mushi. He could also go for just the uh, straight up butterfly if he really wanted to, which is actually quite nice as well. It makes him it, it, it makes him attack so damn fast. It's not even so much about the evasion in this kind of game, but it would make him attack so fast. And supplementing that with extra damage means 
more overall damage. Yeah. So that, that wonderful DPS counter you're searching for. Yeah. I, I still think Scotty would be great to just help kite out these. Scotty's is generally a really good item against uh, strengthers, just because they're usually melee, except for like Huskar and I guess Wisp. Is there another one I'm missing? I don't know. But um, they, they rely a lot on their positioning and they get kited off, kited out frequently. So we'll see what he goes for. Yeah. I'd also keep my eyes very, very closely on uh, Mushy during a team fight because if he dies, and he got, and he dies as the Queen of Pain, the DK, the Bristleback, that's a huge injection of money coming into these heroes. Sure. Because he's on the 702 KDA at the moment. Yeah. So that's a big streak that can be taken from the SF. They also have the fail safe the, of the Aegis right now, but uh, and Alliance are really, really, I mean, they're known for split pushing and they're known for kiting heroes around and kind of wasting teams' times. So usually an Aegis against Alliance is not as effective against, say, an Aegis against other hero, uh, other teams. Yeah. If you catch my drift. So. But with this Aegis, he's, he's already burned two minutes out of it, so... Yep. They're not, they're not finding it, and they're not going to make anything with it because he's the only player down this bottom lane. Loader, he's the one which is nearest to death, but he doesn't let BKB available if required. Ooh, they the think, Fnatic aren't going for it at all. They think there's more heroes behind him. They don't, they don't really see. Like, yeah, Maz behind him, but that's not enough. So they're a little bit scared. They don't have too much vision. They have two wards kind of in the same area, actually, interesting enough. Uh, but it doesn't spot out. <laughs> it's actually kind of very weird, to be honest. Interesting to fly to the KOX. Why now has a metal hammer in his, in his stash? So he's going to go into a BKB, but we've got a couple of incomplete items on the Drow Ranger already. So between mana style, like the Helm of the Dominator, so you can have an Alpha Wolf or potentially stack up agents for your team, this is all missing, or even finishing up the Mask of Manas, it just doesn't exist. Okay, here's their timing push. So they want to use this Aegis, and they, they're having Mushy push down bottom. He is going to go for the Butterfly, which I think he just about has. Um, very, very close. And they're going to, yeah, they're going to smoke down here and actually push this. But Alliance aren't going to fight them. Uh, they, they have no need to fight them underneath the T2 tower. So you might kill a Fabra Bulldog in mid, but yep, there's your blink, Echo Slam, Totem Stomp, Hex, Finger Stun, Admiral Bulldog, Soul Assumption from Visage. And it's a little bit of a spree on him. That's a big commitment to kill off one hero, but it works because now Mushi can take the T2 tower. This is like the best of everything. They're pushing top lane with the birds. They're keeping them inside their base, essentially. They got a kill in mid, they're pushing bottom, they're using the, well, they probably won't use the Aegis, but they're threatening with the Aegis. And that's sometimes just as strong. He's fine. You're right with the butterfly pickup from Mushy. So it's coming out in the courier at the moment. Loader and Pike are the ones being tasked with pushing out that top lane. And this will give space to Arcade to farm up. I don't know if he's also searching for more farm on him to complete up the Aghanim Scepter. Because they kind of need that on Arcade. Because that allows the DK and the Bristleback to be a little bit more over aggressive on the side lanes without always relying on having to have a TP. Yeah, he's going to be really far away from that though, going for the mech. And this is the problem, I think, with Lotus and I didn't build this game, is that they weren't able to, they weren't able to really do anything with this. They can't split, they can't group up and push now, it's just too late. They had a really good start early on, but they, I don't, they, they let Fnatic bounce back into this. And I really have to attribute that, honestly, to Bushi just playing so well. He's actually really, really taken over this game. Well, that's one of his signature heroes, that Shadow Fiend. Well, looking for it in earlier games. TP out by Vassan, she'll get away in time. A couple of familiars also going to find out Rob Bulldog, and then he'll also flag the fact they're in the trees. But you got to re-summon already over for the Versace. He didn't actually go for the Aghanim Scepter. He decided to think uh, he decided to go into Solar Crest instead. Yeah, which I think is totally fine. I I, I think this item is it's, I can't even say underused because a lot of people are using it, but. I think it's underappreciated in terms of being able to push high ground because so many situations the best way to push high ground is just have that one hero sit up in front and then everyone sit behind them and force them to go on your hero. But if you can put something that like that makes him so much more tanky, like just leaps and bounds more tanky for something so cheap and, and honestly a very, very people don't talk about this, but it's a very far cast range. Like you can cast it from pretty far away and keep yourself uh, you know out of harm's way. I ho I ho Ohio is in the last couple of seconds of this Invis rune. He walked so close to Pycat who ended up hanging in the trees in the top lane. It's like he's trying to sandwich in whoever's going to come to the top lane. Or just creep skip it out and TP back. Pycat's whole objective this game has been split pushing with, with his axe ulti. Like he hasn't really, he's just been trying to push out lanes. Trying to decide if he wants to come back or not. But I don't think they, no, they can't, they can't fight this. God, Mushi is just so big. Yeah. Are they going to go further? Mad, Fissure stun, and then just take him out so quickly. Top tower has but they didn't really have a chance to survive. Pycat was hunting a courier, couldn't kill it off. 
So speed bursts off back to the tower. Loda was looking to try and move in through the bottom lane, staring down the tier 2 tower, but Alliance has already, uh, already had their tier 3 tower in the middle lane being chipped away, and Admiral Bullock just buys an item for now. It's a Heaven's Halberd. He's not trying to save that silence for anything else later on. He just goes directly into defense duty. And with the Illuminate, uh, he got enough damage. Like, get rid of one of the familiars of Visage. But as we mentioned, he's got to resummon. It's only a level 1 Visage, too. Uh, level 1 familiar. Yep. And I don't think that uh, Fnatic actually won. I mean, dear god, they actually did a lot of damage to that tower. I don't even think that was their objective, though, to actually push the tower or push high ground. It was just kind of force them back, see how much damage you could get done, and then like, they want to wait for the next Aegis. Because they're going to have another full item on Mushi. They're probably going to have another full item on Tibia. Yeah, it's right. true. Admiral Bulldog, and go slam, and initial stun, Fitch is there too, but blinding light, pushes the back, which he does get the ulti up, and in comes your Sonic Wave from Pycat, Admiral Bulldog, still alive for such a long period of time, they still have to kill him, he's running away, Mushi does not have the damage required, Admiral Bulldog will escape, Mushi won't, he'll go down Ohio so low, 55 HP, and man, this is why he's called Bristleback, because he was unkillable. Oh man, he had the Crimson Guard activated too. And I didn't see, but I think maybe a couple of those auto attacks were affected by Blinding Light. It was, it was Blinding Light and Halbert. Because he picked up the Halbert before the fight began, so he had like those two oh, different ways. That. That, that ain't gonna miss it. And KYXY is now being initiated on by Loda, who picked up that Blink Dagger, sticking close to the Dro. Just trying to make him feel a little bit more insecure. And actually can die here. If Pike had committed, then he could have blinked, screamed, and Sonic waved. But he had yeah. no idea what else was behind that Dro. And I can't think of a better hero to get the, the extra surge of gold than the Quap. Like, she does, she will do so much more with that gold, I think, than any other hero on his team, at least at this stage. Maybe you could argue, like, an Axe for, for Coddle would be great. Um, but Bristleback essentially has everything he wants. DK, it, basically, in this kind of setup game, this is all he wants to do. I mean, this is, this is like the core. But Quap can go so much further. She only has one real item, and hasn't been farming that well, so she really needed that. So, so, so what do you want to see? Is it the BKB we talked about previously? Uh, is that still effective up against Fnatic at this point of the game? I mean, it's re it's obviously really good against ES and Lion, and he probably will have to get it at some point. Um, you don't want to get it, though, because Drow and SF just don't care about it. I mean, yeah. I guess SF maybe does a little bit, but so Drow... Yeah, go, going for something like a Scythe will at least be a little bit more like... The control is in Alliance hands. Yeah, I, I don't know. I feel like he can never jump in without a BKB, so maybe he does just go for that BKB afterwards. I know that he does love to pick up Scythe a lot for PyCat on the co-op, but... I mean, we'll see. He still, he still obviously wants to save for buyback. If they die in a fight, they could lose their base in a matter of seconds. That's, that is the problem with, with Drow Visage, or just Drow in general. Plus, they can pick off a couple of them. There's a lot of farm to be had on that bottom lane. Someone should be heading down there shortly. It looks like it's going to be Arke. So far, he's already picked up the Ogre Club. So it's just strength that he was able to buy without having to go up to the secret shop. But I'm still waiting for that Aghanim Scepter. We are talking about Blinding Light previously causing problems for Fnatic. Combining up with obviously the Halbert, the Hood of Defiance, and a Crimson Guard. No wonder Admiral Bulldog kept, keeps surviving the entire time. But when you have Blinding Light, and then you Dying also add the heal that can come from Coddle during the team fight. Because they, again, you, you got no nighttime controls. There's no, there's no Luna, there's no Night Stalker, so you're not going to be able to switch the nighttime in. Yeah, and they're actually going to smoke three man up top. It looks like they really want to get a kill onto this Drow. What's their initiation here? It's got to be like... It's, it's walking from behind with Admiral Bulldog. That's, that's, the, oh, that's the initiation. Wow, what a BKB! They actually already used both the BKBs. Triple TPs are on the way, but now Admiral Bulldog finds Ohio. He's stopping the TP out right for the moment. The Fusia stolen by Bucking Man with the Illuminates. A little bit of target, but Admiral Bulldog, he's trapped in the trees. Loaded the blinding light, trying to give him a little bit more space. They will bring him down this time around. SF to get the kill and Loader. No BKB, but the Sonic Wave comes in from Pycat. No combination because Ohio, 100% the money with the Echo Sam. Control him up, massive low, in fact the Familiars will rip him apart, and Arkin is the only man to survive Fnatic, perfect counter initiation, after what was a bit of a bum bumbled initiation. I mean the BKB reaction from KYXY was so fast man, that was so, I, I can't think of a faster initiation than a, than a Blink Dragon Tail from DK, it's nearly instant, the only thing you have to do is actually just walk and get into the range, but that's what the Blink is for. Very, very fantastic stuff from him. And then also, I don't think it really might not have mattered as there's a DD basically waiting bottom for them, introducing them into the Roshan pit if they want to. Yep. <laughs> but um, Dro takes Roshan in probably like under 10 seconds by doing this. The Blinding Light pushed two heroes away and then DK actually missed his nuke, which the damage reduction at this stage of the game is actually pretty big.
and it was just kind of funny to see. And then I, I looked at the tooltip and Dry actually had no damage being removed from him, so he's able to hit for full. And yeah, this, uh, this is going to be a fast Roshan. He's actually going to save the DD for a later date because he's like, I can already take this out pretty fast. Well, with the Vegas team all and the double damage ring bottled up by the SF, yeah, you could be looking to go high ground here as Fnatic. But at the same time, we've, we thought they could do it before, and that didn't turn out too well. But they make, they make sure the Trojan range can at least stay alive and give her the Aegis the model. The SF's already pretty well slotted, and he's getting very close to finishing up with Satanic. And they may just wait for the Satanic to be done on, on the SF. Yeah, I'm wondering if uh, MKB is in store as well. Like, he had kind of similar problems last game. We'll, wonder, we'll see if he remedies those problems in this game once it comes, uh, once it comes to it after he uh, purchases the Satanic. Admiral Bulldog. Say hello to your new plate mail. Arcade's managed to pick up a point booster now. So this Aghanim Scepter for him is 1,300 goldish away. And Pike has decided to go in for either Scythe Advice or Scardi over on this quad. It yeah. could potentially also be Lincoln Sphere up against the line. It's not a bad choice, but... Uh, he, he, he should be able to quickly use the Mana Drain and then the Hex afterwards. Although, I, I mean, you also the same token should be able to use the Blink. Dragon Tail. Sometimes people's reactions are just too quick. A lot of it has to do with vision. Maybe he saw him rushing in. I think it was daytime when he was blinking. Yeah, in. It was daytime and the creep wave was in front of him. Okay. Well, so there you go. DK walked past the creep wave. So it's almost some, somewhat of a gamble BKB used by KYX, but you know. But uh, a gamble that heavily paid off in that instance. Mm. And because of it, so much agility on him. Still only giving 66 bonus uh, to everyone across the map. I say only. Uh, what a lane, Bushy. This is a big catch out. They've managed to pick up the SF, and there's no escaping for him. The Rubik will actually take him out, getting 800 gold onto this little Rubik, which brings him very, very close to a blink dagger on that, or potentially a four stuff. That's another way they could go. As, I'm really interested that, that Lodo, or not Lodo, um, Bushy went for that. There was no heroes on the map whatsoever, so it, it looked like at least my eyes to be a clear bait just because no one was showing at all and not to mention it was the bristleback that he was trying to bully around down there which is not a hero you can bully around he only had johnny behind him like that was it yeah like, it was kind if, of a weird play if you could blink hex and mad drain out and keep him controlled for long enough then maybe yeah they could have bullied I, around the bristleback but there was no one showing and the, the most they could do is bullying him around like i don't think they can even kill him with those two yeah maybe they can if they like hex or like you know stun him and run around and constantly try to attack him from the front, but that's a lot easier said than done. Yeah, he's familiar to such a nuisance, but not to Admiral Bulldog. They attacked him a couple of times, a very minimal effect as uh, we get BTs on our, on Ohio, so he's quite happy to move everywhere across this map. And Fnatic, they do have this golden experience advantage, but it doesn't really feel like they've got the ability to finish this game still. <laughs> it's sort of keeps like coming down for me. I see a massive advantage, but at the same time, I've seen Fnatic do exactly the same thing, where they just push, and they take out an entire wave, and then they take the base. And this happened with their Pugna build, like the, the wonderful five minute long team <laughs> fight they had. Yeah, the, the bots will help with all this kind of split pushing that Alliance is doing. And uh, I, I think that the choice to go straight Axe for Pycat over BKB ended up being the right one. Just because he's bought a lot of time by constantly pushing out these lanes. If he hasn't been able to have that low cooldown, he can't. He obviously cannot use the Sonic Wave on Creeps ever. But now he can. Oh, this is a Blinken actually from Loda, and then a Blinken from, from Matt as this. well. They do not want this. Matt, oh he skins up away. Loda looking for the stun, but gets stunned up himself. They can turn this into two. KOXY kills off Matt. Now they move over to the Dragon Knight. Support's coming in from Pycat behind. Loda has to trigger the BKB, and they could try and turn a fight. This Sonic Wave hits on two. Where's that breathe fire? Into the tree lines with the spill damage. Here's that B Frost Dragon. The big attack by Mushi. The head to Sonic Mom. Pycat being controlled. He's got his Blink Dagger off cooldown again. Now he's away to safety, but they've lost Loda. With a Requiem build up, Admiral Bulldog is tanking and just surviving. He's back into the drone as well as the SF, which is where the damage is coming, and that's why SF jumps in front. And really, you can only move to the cliff side to keep the back turn towards both of them. He'll still drop down a big double damage through his ball, gives more. And uh, wow, where the hell did he just go behind the team, behind the racks in the mid? That was an ulti, but that, that forced out a buyback from Pinecat. We'll see the glyph was popped as well. The damage Ball. coming out, uh, uh, see kick. There's the damage from Pinecap, you will finish the job, killing off that Visage, Mushy staying around too long, KOXY, Mana Leak, he's gonna get stunned up, he actually ran it out, ran out of mana, got stunned up, he has the Agassi Mortal available, and Mushy, he's got nothing to come back here for, 
Like we've got Gus up as well from Matt. He's going to push KYX right back in with the Illuminate. One quick attack into Matt. I say one quick attack. He's actually going to get the kill in death. But still, you lose the Drow Ranger, you burn the Aegis the Immortal, and you didn't take the Rax. You hurt the range, but you didn't take the melee. Yeah, that death probably shouldn't have happened at the very end there, but uh, got a little bit greedy. I think it, in the end, I mean, th they used a lot, though, to defend that push. It was it was two buybacks. They used Corp as well as Bristleback buyback. Yeah, But so. in, in return, you also got now Arcane with the full Aghanim Scepter up and running. Just great. You, you keep your Rax alive up against what could have been a death push by Fnatic. Yeah, I, I think the next Aegis is going to be way bigger, though. They're going to have cheese. They're going to have more items. Like, they have the Satanic now, which was, I think, ready to go for Mushi during that whole fight. He just didn't have the courier there ready to go. And, and that's pretty big. Um, like I said, MKB is obviously going to... I really feel like MKB might be the... If it's not MKB, it's probably going to be Scotty. Um, I think it could also be Manta, but... Will help. That will help with some pushing. I believe Axe is finished. It's yeah. He has enough gold for the Axe onto the Visage. This is really. This is also the, probably the biggest thing, because now split pushing is in the works or can be in the works if it comes down to it. And what do you really do to stop that? Like the only person that's got, I say, right. a like a range attack to start with from the three cores is Pycat. Unless Lotus yeah. wants to go into Dragon form to chase down familiars, but... Honestly, the best way is, like, in daytime is the Coddle, because he can see through the trees and stuff, but he doesn't attack very fast, so... Um, yeah, Bristleback's quills can't kill it, so... It's hard. It's really hard to stop that, if it comes down to it. Well, for now, Fnatic, they're gonna full man smoke up. Try and find an opening up against Alliance, as they will summon up those, those fresh familiars. Well, she's the man just doing the push, and I think uh, Fnatic are realizing that there's no one up here on the top lane. The closest they can get is Admiral Bulldog in the mid, but last time they tried to do this, it wasn't that successful. Because they jumped on Bulldog and he tanked through the entire thing, and then they got counter-initiated pretty hard. Almost she's split pushing. It looks like they're, they, they've done this several times where they're trying to kind of fake them out by someone else pushing, smoking up, or finding a gank outside of the, on a different part of the map. They did that after they pushed mid and then like fake back with Visage TP bottom and then went for the uh, the second go. But we'll see. Radiant's middle barracks are uh, under attack. Okay, springing him back. Yeah, he's, he's dragging loader in so he can keep that farm coming. It looks like they're trying to rush up the silver edge onto the dragon knife. And in order to do that they have to use the bottom lane to push it out. Rubik's still got his own blink dagger so he's fine. He's just a little bit worried about those familiars that are there too. Hmm. Is he going to go for the Silver Edge on, on DK? Does he have any of the other components? Just he's just got the Sanj, and that's, what, that's the only thing that's making me think about it. I think he's going to go for Halberd, because the way the Courier is where it's walking, that's looking like it wants to be Talisman of Evasion. We'll see, though. You might be right. It, it makes sense, because there still are no Monkey King bars, and he's might have actually yeah. spotted out the Satanic that's being picked up, too. Yeah, you're 100% right. So we get two Heaven's Halberds. The BKB durations, what do you got? Seven seconds as well as seven seconds? They're pretty healthy. I mean, yeah. it could be worse. And it will be worse. That is the important thing. It will be worse. Not to mention, it's just, even without the active ability, it's still a really good cost-efficient item to make yourself extremely tanky. Very, very tanky. The, the, the miss chance is extremely high. Um, and it gives you some good strength, too. Alliance are coming over to try and contest Roshan. There's a whole bunch of birds here. They're not going to make it easy for them, not to mention the Fissure, but we've got another maybe now 40 seconds before Roshan's going to spawn up. The Illuminous spam just in case when they try to pounce on that thing, but Admiral Ball of Fissure pounce over on Johnny with the Blink Dagger down. They've got the Lion dead, Mushy winds up the only, not that effective, until he can start attacking into Matt, but he finds Pycat instead with the Gus. He's actually got silenced up, he'll go down for the count, no Pycat back, back available, but Loda's got the space to fight off him, and the familiar birds, they turn on Loda, and the Dragon Eye's being brought down by many, many arrows, while Admiral Bulldog stands its ground. He finally brings down the Versace, the bombs on the KYXY, they've got to stay on top of him right now. They cannot let him get any kind of space, he's into the trees, force off away, that's what we call space. He's away and up on the high ground again. The familiar birds and the fish are blocked down, there's no way to stop this. Roshan, four seconds away from life. But you've got no, you, you've lost two cores from Alliance and Fnatic. They only lost their supports. Oh, he's just fed off birds for nothing. That was really weird. Uh, they just sat there. Oh, it didn't move. Sat there in the trees right here, just a slow attacking Rubik killed all of them. <laughs> that was very, very weird. Considering he's dead too, you would think he has a little bit of spare time. <laughs> just a little bit. Yeah. Ohio, guess the fissure on Matt? There's no follow-up at all. And in fact, Matt could follow up on him. He's got Earth Spike with that Blink Dagger, Telekinesis, and Fade Bolt. 
But man, Bulldog is doing... He, he doesn't even have that many items. He's got two. And then maybe some armor items. He's about to finish his Assault Cuirass. Uh, in, in tank gold, he's got enough money for his Assault Cuirass. It's extremely effective, too, because not only just for the making yourself extremely tanky, but lowering their armor and then getting all those stacks up, you're hitting for so hard. And then lowering their armor at the same time, too. It's obviously a really good item. But the Roche does fall. I think that's cheese, too. It is. Yeah, cheese for the Drow. I think it's better they put the Aegis now on Mushi. I think he's dying a lot quicker. So the lion's keeps trying to well, I say lion's trying to focus him, but it was the uh, it was the lion they focused at the start of the last fight. I mean, theoretically, Drow should drop faster, and she's the one that you should go on because one, you'll disable her ulti; two, you'll disable her marksmanship if she or her precision, or if she dies. Mm -hmm. But SF has been playing a lot more aggressively as he should be, so I think the Aegis is going to be a little bit more effective on him. Well, we get back into this position again where Fnatic, they watch both sides, top and bottom lanes, and just try and keep the pressure on as much as they possibly can. Pinecat's waiting. He does have the Hex, but, like, what do you want to go on here? And if, even Urshing is preparing himself in the lane with the Shadow Amulet. Walks in close, can't find anybody. Walks straight back out again. If he actually gets that, jumps in with the Echo Slam, and then is able to like trigger Silver Edge and get rid of the Dragon Blood on DK or the Bristle back. Oh, Johnny! Oh God! Yeah, he needs to be very careful. Or Staff and Blink will help him get away from this. Like his, his normally that would have worked, but because Coddle has Axe, he knows that he can see him. And as it just hits nighttime, that wouldn't have been a problem before. A game of seconds. Okay, Wexy is already forcing in the mid lane. The top lane is being pushed in by Mushy. But the bottom lane's got some momentum, but then Familiars are going to instantly stop this too. The only downside is from, uh, from Kijik, he cannot bring in these Familiars for the fight. They're too far away. Mushy, blinding line, and she pushes them away from Loda, so he can't just get the Dragon Tails done. But it looks like they're trying to bait the BKB out of him, which isn't going to happen when you're walking around with an Aegis. Oh, so oh there's your first stun. Manly, high cap, Sonic Wave, four stuff. As she drains more of Mushy's mana. Yeah, she bottles them up though. <laughs> Friendly bottle there from Ohio as well as the four staff. Trying to finally siege this. The familiars have finally made it here, so if they wanted to do some kind of split pushing from between top and bottom, they can now. So they're trying to find some kind of entry here. We'll see if he can because if he gets the damage up with those drought war, it's going to die in a matter of seconds. Where's that opening? KRX Y is being pushed back by Abra Bulldog, who was even happy to walk a little bit down the stairs. Just keep the back turn, they breathe fire and stun up the creep wave. Oh, and yeah. now, well, oh, there, there it goes. Admiral Bullock even getting beaten down by KOXY, they'll push him back. The Sonic does have a resummon available, so in two seconds time. Yeah, the pig's already coming up saying, do you want to resummon this? There goes one familiar, and there's only one left. You can still work, this is, even this is one, look at that, 100, plus 172 damage from that one familiar. <laughs> Take the rack. he'll probably, yeah, he'll resummon him right now. And you can go in with a fresh batch the next time, and they, they do have Glyph. Uh, they didn't want to use it just for the range racks, but uh, they're going to want to use it soon. Well, Mushy. they got Mushy, pick up, throw down, stun as well. He's very, very low on mana. Remember, this AFC model is still in the hands of the SF. He's now completely out of mana, but Admiral Bulldog falls oh. the deep end no higher. Jumping in for the Echo Slam, Admiral Bulldog's down for the count. Loader will come in with the big Sonic Wave. The damage is not enough to even kill off Ohio. And Pycat's got nothing else to give. The mid racks will be dropping here in a moment. Loader's doing whatever he can to keep back these familiars in this attack. They don't have a fallback, so they lose one of these familiars down. Mushy, pick up, Loader. There's no stun. He blinked up but didn't have the mana available to do so. Now he's going to bottle charge up, but you've lost your melee ranks. Can we still the run out of here? And Fnatic, they're happy to retreat. They took out mid ranks, they took out the top tier 3 tower. What more could you ask for? Really nice initiations this entire game from Ohio. Had a, a bit of a struggling time up in the top lane, as to be expected against a Bristleback. Um, missed a couple stuns here and there in the laning stage, but has really been on point with his Blink Echoes. And now has a, a, a Shadow Blade on top of that all. By the way, Tumushi is ready to replace that Aegis with an MKB, finally. So no more missing, no more shenanigans of missed chance for him. Um, as I think it's a really needed item. But you saw, man, that the damage from the Burks is just insane. And there, like you said, there's just no way to really combat it. They have no fast attacking heroes to, to kill those Burks. That's just the way Alliance drafted. And they're just buying up whatever they can to try and survive this now. As far as buybacks goes, Keeper of the Lions is the only one with buyback. Everyone else is short of money, just over a thousand gold in all of them. 
The blinding line will easily push Mushy Mushy back off the range ranks. Because uh, he doesn't have that MKB on him just yet. Remember that's like the Angus Simon Kwa XY being picked up. Thrown back in again. The Mantle League's on him again, so he's probably gonna get Yeah, no, nope. the Mantle League will wear off. So no sun to him. The Rax Oda jumping in. He really wants to get rid of this bonus damage. He's right on top of KOA XY, and now he has to back up the BKB's one off. Another Illumina. Is there a breathe fire available? Three seconds away. And they're trying to chase it down a little bit further. Arrow ball on the front lines, and there's the blinkin. Stun on KOA XY. He's tricking the knees, so he's back up the full again. But how long will he remain there? Arrow pulled off with the Crimson Guard. 17 one charges. May as well trigger them now. He's so low. Kills off the Passage. Now he does. He's here with Ohio. For the fight. The completely split up. Johnny's there. Arrow pulled off. Controlled by Ohio, but not dead just yet. Keeping his back turned. Mushy's on the way in. They're draining at the man. They got the kill. Pico will he's going to snipe off as the Illumina does fly in. But you've lost two sets of frags. KOA XY. He's down here looking for Mad. He's out of Mana. And KOA XY. Does he have enough? RK's trying to just right click if Mad. He can't do the job. Mad's the last man up in the mid. He will go down as well as Ohio just chases him in. And it really does look like a GG here. Fanix still the droid range rub. She's low. Oh, Quap really wants to go for this. There's low mana, actually completely out of mana on the Earthshaker. Sonic wave in four seconds. Oh, he can't go for it. He doesn't have the vision anymore. But the damage has been done. They've beta the buyback on the Coddle. Not really that huge, but they got the top racks. The mid racks is cleaned up. Mushi, he wants more. Has that MKB now ready to go. It's almost like he wanted his Aegis to expire just so he could use that extra item. Um, oh, we'll get mana leaked here. Take some extra. MKB one second though. And he could try and turn and fight this if he really feels pressured. But he's got, he's got Satanic as well as BKB, so he turns the Satanic on. Uh, farms up the Great Wave, doesn't even care about the heroes. And now KOXY returns to the fight too. So they'll, they'll finish off this building. These supports don't even phase him, and in fact Ohio, perfect blink in Fissure, and that may even be the game because this will be Megas. Draw Ranger finishes up a full Satanic. That's what she bought with all of her extra cash. And well, Loda does jump in, the Hex are there over on Mushi with the Breathe Fire, but Pycat silenced up because of the Gust Pack. The Megas are already available now, and this is it. It's now or never if the Lion's gonna get some big kills on these two cores. Mushi being stunned up, Arrow Ball to the front lines. Johnny, yes, since he can't help him out at all, the Glimmer Cave is actually gonna let him escape for just a second here, into the tree line, then a blink away to, in time. But the SF unable to survive. Oh, their base. Yeah, the T4 towers are currently dying. They call GG. They realize their base is being just destroyed. And Fnatic will force this to a third game. Reaching practically it's an hour and 15 minutes if we start combining up the games together for how long this series has taken. So it's a bit of a marathon that's being run here at X Games. I think just, again, I said it before, but I think just really well played by Mushi. Like, you could tell he really wanted to take over the game. I think his item build was very, very sound. Like, he's one of the SFs that really like to go for that early mech, um, likes to push, but he recognized the situation that a mech just really would have done anything given what they were going through. Yep.